Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. For those of you who don't know me already, my name is Craig, host of Digital Startup. I'm here to help non-tech savvy entrepreneurs build their first online store. But today I thought I'd do something a little bit different by showing you how to create your own web server for Magento 2. If you haven't watched the previous two videos, I covered what we'll learn in the series and showed you how to create a development server on DigitalOcean. In this video, I'll be showing you how to install Apache and configure it for Magento 2 how to install MySQL and secure the installation, how to install PHP and any extensions needed for Magento 2, and how to install PHP MyAdmin and secure the installation. Now there is a lot to go through in this episode, which is why you'll find a link to an article I wrote in the description below that you can use to help you follow along. Right, I'll see you in just a second. Rightio, so the first thing that you're going to notice in this episode is that I've split my screen into two. On the right hand side you're going to see my web browser and on the left hand side you're going to see my putty terminal which is the application that we installed in the last episode which allows us to communicate with our server. So the first thing we're going to install is Apache. Apache is going to make up the backbone of our web server as it's a web server service but before we can do that we need to update our repositories. So we're going to do that by running the super user command and apt get update. And that's going to do refresh that. Okay, that's done. And now we're going to use the super user command again to install uh, Apache. So let's do that. And I'm going to put a little Y flag on the end so that when it asks me, are you sure you want to install XYZ? it'll automatically put a yes in for me. So let's run that. Okay, next we are gonna to want to update one of the configuration files that Apache uses. We're essentially going to tell it to look out and use little configuration files that Magento will be using. You'll see them as .ht access files after we've installed Magento. And these have got like, as I say, little configurations for Apache to consider uh, when it's running through the web directory. So to do that, I'm going to use the super user command again, which we'll be using a lot of, and then nano, which is our text editor. And we're gonna edit this file in this location. Again, you don't have to remember what I'm typing in because all of these notes will be in the article that you'll find in the description. Uh, next, I'm going to put in that configuration to consider those HD access files for me. And now I'm going to save this file. And we're done there. I'm just going to update another configuration file as well that Apache uses. Um, it's not critical that we do this, but you'll sometimes see a warning message when you go to restart or do certain commands or services for Apache. So we're just going to go and do the uh, file edit now. So super nano, let's see, apache, apache.conf. And at the very end, I'm just going to put in server name and then the IP address for our machine, which is 138, 68, and again, I'm gonna save and exit. Cool. Next, we're gonna check for any errors in case we've done any typos by running the following command. Apache C, you know, config test, and everything is okay in the configuration files that we just did. Next, we're gonna want to enable uh, an Apache uh, service which allows uh, rewriting I won't go into too much detail about it, but it's a must that you have to activate in order to use Magento. Uh, I kind of fell down on this a couple of times when I was first building a server to install Magento. I kind of went around in circles because I completely forgot about the rewrite service. So I'm gonna use a super user command to enable that. And now we're gonna restart, oh, put the sudo command in. Next, we're gonna restart our Apache service so that all of our changes take effect. 
when you actually go into the uh, try and connect to the server through the web browser, you'll get an error like the site can't be reached. So the reason for this is because if you remember in the last episode, we uh, created a firewall. Now the ports that we use for web browsing, which is port 80 and 443 are blocked. So we need to enable Apache access for the firewall. So if we use sudo uf w allow in Apache Okay, apparently I don't know how to spell allow. So, CD allow. Okay, now we've uh, we've done that. Okay, so now if we uh, refresh this page where we're trying to connect to our server via the IP address, we're going to see the Apache Ubuntu default page, which means everything that we've done so far during this process has all been done correctly. Okay, next we're going to install MySQL, which is a database management system that we're going to need for Magento 2. Um, as we've just done the sudo apt get updates, there's no need to do that again. So let's go back into putty and run sudo apt get install install MySQL server and I'm going to do my Y again and it's going to ask me for a root password to put in so I'm just going to put one in now and then I'm going to confirm that password make sure that you uh, write down that password to begin with because resetting the password is a bit of a pain if you do forget it. Cool, and that's all installed now. Now I'm going to run a, a script uh, which will be a security script for my SQL and it's going to run through some options that will say do you want to do this, yes or no, and we'll just do that together now. So let's enter the password that we just did. Okay, the first question, validate password plugin um, for Great security, I would hit yes for that. I'm gonna hit no because I'm just using simple passwords um, for my dev setup because I don't want to be remembering them or having a desk full of post-it notes with passwords on. So I'm gonna put a no. Um, do I uh, wanna change the root password that I just created? Nope. I remove anonymous users, yes. Disallow root login remotely, yes. Remove test databases, yes and reload privilege tables, yes. Cool, MySQL installation's all done now. That was so simple. Again, if you wanna go over that, check out the article in the description. Okay, so now it's time to install uh, PHP. So again, we don't have to do the updates because we did it before. Let's do apt get install uh, and list the things that we wanna install. So that's PHP. Uh, the yes tag on the end. Oh, what have I done here? The MP. Oh, wow. I keep typo in tonight, don't I? So let's try it again. So now that that's done, uh, we need to edit a configuration file. Um, so I'm going to use a super, super user command, uh, nano being our text editor, and edit the file in this location. There we go. And all I'm doing in this uh, configuration file is moving index.php, which is further on the right here. So let me do, 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 delete that from here and put that in at the beginning of the list instead. This tells the file what files to prioritize when reading a directory. Uh, it'll always look for an index file, um, but, the, but the extensions depend on this file as to which one it will read first. Because Magento uses index.php files, we wanted to check for those first of all. So let's save this change now. And next we want to install PHP uh, modules or extensions that Magento is going to need as well. So let's do that now.
sweet uh, and now let's restart the uh, Apache service again for our changes to take effect. Cool, and that's uh, PHP done. Okay, so far, communicating with the server has all been done using a command line interface, which is putty in this case. Um, what I'm going to install next is something called PHP MyAdmin, which allows us to manage the MyQS database uh, management service that we installed earlier uh, using a web browser instead of doing it through commands. I like GUI interfaces. I try to avoid sometimes using Putty um, where I don't have to use it because I'm a very visual person. So let's let's do that now. So we use the super user command uh, apt get php get text. I think that's it. Let's run that. Now, when you come to this screen, it looks like you have Apache 2 selected, but you don't. The cursor is actually hovering on top of it. So if you hit space, you'll see it then get selected, and that will be indicated by an asterisk. There we go, and I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to head to again on there. I'm going to put a basic password in. Well, that's installed then we need to enable some required extensions so i'm going to use that using the following two commands so that's super user php enable mod um, crypt and MB string. Cool. And then restart the Apache service again. Oh, Apache 2. So hopefully, if I've done that correctly, if I now put slash PHP my admin at the end of. Um, my web address in my browser, we should see, fingers crossed, PHP my admin. How cool is that? So I'm going to log in using the root username and password that I created. And there we go. How cool is that? So now we can manage all the databases and tables that Magento uses from here rather than having to enter freaky commands that you probably won't remember in the panel on the left hand side. Don't forget I have a link to an article in the description that goes over this video in a little bit more detail. I don't expect anyone to be able to take this in during their first watch, so feel free to watch this video as many times as you need to until it sinks in. If you found this video useful, feel free to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Also hit that like button and leave any comments or questions below if you have any. In the next episode, I'll be showing you how to set the file system permissions for Magento 2 installation. Thanks for watching.